When I moved off grid two years ago, I didn't know much about gardening. Now that I've been out here for a little while, I thought I'd explain what I have going on. I arrived in May of 2020, and my first attempt at growing, I built a garden right here where the goat pen is now was the first garden. For those that are tuning in for the first time, all this land was just bare land. And so I built my homestead. I came out with just the van and the trailer and everything you see now wasn't here two years ago. With the garden here, I learned a lot. I planted just about everything that you'd ever expect to see in a garden for the most part. Uh, you know, fruit and vegetables and salad and corn and potatoes. Uh, melons and all that stuff and a lot of it grew to my surprise. You might notice the wire mesh that's on the the goat pen here. Well it wasn't to keep the goats in you know this this cattle wire would keep the goats in but the main issue that I had with my garden was uh, well something was nibbling on the plants and it actually took me that first season to figure out that it was actually mice I never saw them I didn't see telltale signs or anything like that but I did find out that it was mice kitty 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 come here Annie so this is Annie she's my farm cat and if it wasn't for her I would have mice probably all over the place but she does an amazing job <laughs> Of keeping them at bay. So the first trick to gardening out here in the high desert of Arizona that I learned was to get rid of the mice and the best way I found was to to have cats. It helped a lot to use wire mesh and it, it did help a lot but they found ways in sometimes but having a cat does the trick. There are no mice on my homestead. If you're new to my channel please consider giving me a subscribe and leave a comment below for the algorithm. Second thing that I did for my garden was start a composting system. And it took me quite a while, but I've always used my own soil that I made from scratch here on the homestead. An example, this is pig manure and the, the hay and some straw that comes out of the pig pen. And this is like six months or so old, maybe more. Um, and I can add dirt to this and cardboard and throw fruit in there and whatever. And it breaks down pretty quickly. So I'm stockpiling it there. And I'm letting this break down completely first. Then I can move this to another area where I can use it. And then I can continue to add more and start a new composting pile. I started to dig a hole for a geothermal greenhouse. When I moved out here, a lot of people were like, there's no way you can, you're never going to make it out there. You'll never be able to garden. And the only way you could ever have a garden out there successfully is if you had a geothermal greenhouse. So I dug this hole that's about 14 feet across and 16 feet long this way. It went down six feet and then I laid down this four inch corrugated tubing it's there's 200 linear feet because this is about a 200 foot space and I laid that down I covered it in three feet of soil and then the point is I should be able to run that system and keep it a lot cooler when it's hot outside or warmer when it's cold outside and I have in fact proven that it was about a 15 degree difference either in the winter or the summer um, but I haven't had a solar system set up to run it continuously and still I've done very well in the geothermal using it only as a sunken greenhouse. These are almost all potatoes. There's some corn and other things and then on this side there's a whole bunch more potatoes and some squash. I have Moringa seeds on the way. And they don't like the, the cold too much. They don't like it below freezing. So I'm going to try to grow a couple of those in here uh, pretty soon. And and then I can run the, the geothermal soon. I have an extra battery. And soon I'll have extra panels so that I can put uh, little solar systems around the homestead where I need them. But this entire geothermal greenhouse was built for under 200 bucks. So I just dug a hole. 
I bought, you know, the, the plastic was like a hundred bucks. The lumber was like a hundred bucks at the time. And, and that's about all there is to it. So it's frugal off grid for sure. I guess I should mention there's a four inch inline fan here and the solar system would run that. And then there's also a, another radiator fan to pull heat out from the top here. After the geothermal, someone was nice enough to send in this hoop house. And I had my doubts about its ability to work. You just got to keep it wide open in the summertime. For the winter, it extends the season by a couple months. I just turned all the soil in here and added compost that I made. And I've continued to add compost. And after two years, the growing has just gotten better and better. And I've never had a larger garden in here than I do right now. During the summer, I water as much as twice a day. Uh, I'll mostly water... I'll water heavily at night and then when it's really quite hot I'll water you know during the day to kind of keep things happy and cool. Now that it's cooler you know like in the 80s and lower 80s I can get away with watering about every other day and since it's raining and whatnot you know sometimes it's a few days in between watering. Last season I harvested about 40 potatoes. I just planted a few potatoes and this time I planted about a hundred potatoes so I could get, you know, 600 to a thousand potatoes. My very first attempt when I grew the garden out there, I had about 25 corn plants and they almost made it to harvest, but there was finally a frost that killed them all off. After the hoop house, I added the uh, raised bed out there. That's a Vijega raised bed. I've got corn and potatoes in there. I lied. I actually built the Hugo culture over there first. And that's why I did the raised bed as if it was a Hugo culture. So I filled the raised bed with wood and everything just like you would a Hugo culture. And I actually did the Hugo cultures first. This Hugo culture is made up of large logs and branches that I cut and laid down and then compost and dirt and compost and dirt. <laughs> and then uh, I planted a bunch of stuff and, um, and then I continued to mulch it. And there is a lot of younger corn on it. I don't know if the corn on this Hugo culture will make it, but you know, this was all an experiment and I started planting this as early as I could. I have two more Hugo cultures over here that I was planning to seed and then see if the monsoon season might water them enough. But now that I've got enough water, I'll, I'll probably grow in them next season. Probably this whole area could be kind of a garden. This is not a video about the pond, but the pond is important because now I'm able to use this rainwater to water my gardens a lot more efficiently without worrying about water. When it rains really hard, the driveway washes down into the swell here. And so I've started growing in the swells as well. And then that water goes all the way down into the pond. And I can easily just throw a battery over there and a pump and water all the gardens from there. There's that swell, which actually, it can grab water from my shower and that's just a gray water. I only use natural soaps. And when I when I shower, the gray water just goes into the swell and sits and it soaks in and, and they use it. When it rains really hard, it makes it to the pond. There's more swells, which are new around the driveway. And I have another rain harvesting system over here that goes into a cistern. And any water that comes from here or the, the road, it can go into the swell. That can come down the swell. This swell comes around this way. And then it goes back and all the way around the property into the pond. The newest system I'm working on is uh, once the pond got full, I realized that the swells didn't have anywhere to send the water. So now the the swell comes in, it'll fill up the pond, the pond will overflow and go out the other side. And then there's a swell that runs all the way down. And there are five little arms that come out. They're swells. And they're just going to run out into the desert here. And 
I think I'm going to start an orchard here. It'll be a mixture of different trees, I think. Some vegetation will come up around the pond and new trees and things. But those are the systems I have in place for gardening. I'll have to give you guys more details on each individual system. But, real quickly, I'm sure that if you're new to the area and you're trying to garden in the high desert, you might like to see what's thriving in here. And I'll show you real quick. All throughout the hoop house, there's these large patches of potatoes. And potatoes did, you know, really pretty good. I, Like I said, I was a new, you know, a beginning gardener. And so I only harvested 40 potatoes my first attempt. But I think we're going to do a lot more this time. And... The other thing you can see that stands out a lot is the squash. There's all there's a bunch of different squash in here. I think I have pumpkins and um, spaghetti squash and acorn squash and just all kinds of different squash in here. Broccoli seems to be doing pretty good. I got a bunch of these that are looking healthy. I think this one's cabbage actually. That's cool. I didn't even know that was there. Uh, look at this big broccoli. So there's broccoli throughout here. Um, another thing that does really good is um, Swiss chard and beets. So um, they make, you know, the, the leaves on both can be eaten, the beet tops or the Swiss chard. And, um, you know, they just grow really good. So you got lettuce and then you got a root if you got the beets. I had a ton of lettuce in here and it did really good, but once it got super hot, it didn't like it as much and it kind of died out. So it works best um, probably before, you know, the heat of the summer and a little bit after you could do. Um, a lot of carrots in here too. Let's see. we got to find some carrots. Uh, oh, here's a bunch of carrots. You can see them growing under there kind of like a canopy there's just in between things here's carrots and uh there's carrots all throughout there lettuce and stuff hidden down in here <laughs> corn grows natively out here so the corn should do just fine i i missed the harvest my first attempt but uh i think we're going to do just fine this time and a lot of people you know this is just a small garden area and a lot of people are confused that i just have this little row here but they're just so easy. It's it's really easy to just you grab some of the little seeds that are coming off and you put it down in the hairs and you pollinate it. So it's really simple to do. I planted tomatoes a few different times and thankfully I finally, I have about six plants right now that are doing pretty good. And most of this stuff is gonna come to harvest in the next month and a half or two. You can see this guy is starting to get a fruit there. When I started planting, I started as early as I could and then succession planted every two weeks. And so all all season, all year long, I've been harvesting, you know, beets here and there and um, turnips here and there and salad and different things. Succession planting is a good way to get more out of your seasons. That's probably about all I have for you today. And, and then I could go into more detail down the road. If you'd like to support my channel, I have two amazing things to tell you about real quick. Uh, I'm part of the Off-Grid Homestead Bundle. You might know some of the creators that are in it. I, I think it's uh, Creative Explained. Oh, the dogs are knocking me over. Go on. And, uh, and the other, I think, Tiny Shiny Homestead or something like that. There are some pretty big YouTubers. Go on, guys. And... Uh, Anyway, my two my two homesteading books are in there and it's about a six thousand dollar bundle and it's only fifty bucks. So it hasn't started yet. If you're interested in that, uh sign up for my mailing list. It's it's down below and I'll keep you in the loop that way. And then if you guys are looking for land, you can use my link below for discount lots and save 10% off of any of the lots that you find. There's land all over the United States that would be great for homesteading. And, you know, if you find a $3,000 property, you can knock 300 bucks off. That's pretty huge, right? So uh, those links are down below. Please subscribe. Leave a comment if you got a question. I'll catch you guys on my next video. Come here. Silly guys, huh? Huh? You guys are silly. You're trying to knock me over.